Hi everyone, welcome back to the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center. I'm Go Local News Editor Kate Nagel. Thanks for tuning in this Friday afternoon. We'd like to thank my guests Bob Wickham, Ray Rickman, and Wendy Fashion for coming on. And we'd like to thank a regular Dr. Terry Roarig down at the Naval War College, expert in the Korean Peninsula, ahead of the summit next week between President Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un. Dr. Roarig, thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. Glad to be back. We'll always love to pick your brain about the more salient issues to keep an eye on when these two end up meeting. Now, next week in Vietnam, lots of talk about what this meeting will entail, of course, as they talk about uh, denuclearization in North Korea and as well as it plays into the broader peninsula as well. What can we expect to see next week? Well, I think there are things that you can expect and things that you may hope to see. I think on the latter list, uh, in regards to what we hope to see, I think two key pieces in my view. First of all, there has to be a very formal statement that indicates there is agreement on what the simple word denuclearization means. Mm. There have been differences in regards to that. Does, does that mean North Korea denuclearizes? Uh, North Korea is believed to perhaps have a more expansive definition of what that means, that it may entail uh, some removal of U.S. troops on the peninsula, perhaps an alteration to the alliance, uh, other sorts of things that go with that. And, and so a common definition of what denuclearization means is going to be important, despite the fact that Kim has said that it, he agrees with that goal, but it has not been fully framed the same by both sides. The second piece that's going to be very important is a specific timeline of some sort that shows a detailed plan to reach denuclearization. One of the criticisms that came out of the Singapore summit last June was that there was no specific timeline. Now, I think in some respects, you have to be careful about that assessment because that meeting came a little more quickly than typically happens. There wasn't much time for uh, lower level officials to negotiate the details before the leaders met. But this time there has been much more opportunity for various officials to meet, talk about the details, try to come up with a more uh, formalized plan. And so that's going to be the interesting part to this, in my view, to see what kind of plan emerges from this. Because if it's just a matter of vague statements and not much concrete, I think the general assessment will be that this meeting was a disappointment. Is this meeting, in some ways, as you allude to, having to put the teeth to what that original meeting had been? Of course, it was so heralded that, of course, the two leaders had met at that previous one. Could you say that this one is, in fact, more important because this is where the rubber meets the road? I think in many respects that is the case. Certainly the, the first meeting was groundbreaking just simply that it happened. I mean, a year prior to that, who would have ever thought we'd even see those kinds of pictures? And so even from the standpoint of these meetings and the process reducing tensions on the Korean Peninsula, I think that is an important development and is, is good progress in regards to this. I remain skeptical that we can reach denuclearization, but I think it is something that we have to try. Mm. I think it is important that this process continues to go forward. But as you suggest, the first meeting was important simply because it happened and for some other elements to that. But now it is where we have to start getting down to details and start to see whether the denuclearization process can actually move forward. And so let's talk a little as well. There's some speculation, of course, behind the president's motivations moving towards this meeting, perhaps keeping an eye on the dangling carrot of a Nobel Peace Prize. Um, but then there's also ones that say, perhaps, as you said, if there's not, again, that real backbone to the outcome of this meeting, you know, does, does President Trump really want denuclearization or do you think he favors just keeping the peace with North Korea more? Well, I think the president would, would definitely like denuclearization. I, I think that has been clear from the administration, uh, from South Korea, from others, that that is the ultimate goal. Now, the question, of course, is whether realistically you can achieve that. 
Interestingly, this week, the president has backed away a bit from that, in particular, his references to phrasing this as the ultimate goal and also talking about it in the context of he's in no hurry to have this happen. That certainly is no surprise and suggests that this timeline is much longer than at least was initially suggested by certainly Kim and as well as the Trump administration. But it, it makes one wonder the degree to which the administration understands that this may be certainly a long process, one that we may never get to, but we shall see. But I think the key piece here is that, is that the president is very invested in this. This is his baby now. And so I think he is going to work very hard to try to see if this can be advanced. Now, from the other side of the coin, I think from Kim's perspective, it is very important that the result of this meeting begin to show or at least suggest that there remains some momentum as a part of these, these talks and this process, that it does not come out of all of this, that there is an end and this is over and done and we cannot move forward. Mm. I think Kim will be very crafty, very clever in trying to make sure that this meeting continues to appear to be part of a process that may still have momentum, that may still have a chance to go forward, because I think this is part of North Korea's overall plan to see that this can continue to be a process that that has a, a life that continues beyond uh, February. And let's talk a little bit outside the confines of the U.S.-North Korean relations. Let's talk about the theater in general in relations between North and South Korea and also other Asian countries as well, for instance, China. How does this fit into that bigger sphere uh, over there, Terry? I think China is absolutely delighted to see this, this process going forward. They certainly were not happy with all of the testing North Korea did, particularly in 2017. They applied sanctions and, from what we can tell, actually enforced them vigorously this time, and that that sort of economic pressure had a degree of influence over North Korea's behavior. But the Chinese have also been regularly saying that in addition to that pressure, there has to come dialogue to try to lower tension levels and to try to arrive at some sort of a diplomatic solution to this problem. And so I think they are very happy to see where this goes. I think the Chinese would absolutely like to see denuclearization happen on the Korean Peninsula. But for them, stability is much more of an important goal on the Korean Peninsula and are happy to see this dialogue go forward. Any other uh, aspects of next week's summit in Vietnam, Professor, that we should be keeping an eye on over here? I think two things that, that are very important. First, many have been criticizing the United States that it, it's time for the U.S. to agree to more sank, or to excuse me to more concessions. It will be interesting to see what the United States is willing to offer in regards to concessions, particularly sanctions relief. That has been one of the key pieces that North Korea has has called for. But of course, critics of this process have said. The danger here is North Korea will simply pocket whatever concessions the United States is willing to do. We end up never getting to denuclearization. And so the key is that North Korea has to show some degree of willingness up front to move towards denuclearization. Okay. So I think the key piece is going to be to see what concessions the United States is willing to offer. And then on the flip side, what assurances North Korea is willing to offer that will actually be able to move us in that direction. I think one other key elements that is going to be part of the table is going to be whether we have movement towards a peace declaration, which is something a little less formal than a peace treaty, but it is moving away from the current armistice negotiations, or excuse me, the current armistice agreement that we have to some sort of peace declaration and or peace treaty. Then one last part to this that I think is, is interesting to keep an eye on, and this was certainly part of the Singapore agreement, 
and process was there was the formal meeting between kim and president trump then there was the press conference that occurred after the meeting where the president surprised folks and put on the table the possibility of suspending exercises and also the notion of withdrawing us troops from the korean peninsula but he followed up by saying well but that wasn't really on the table there is always certainly an interesting element of seeing what sort of ad hoc uh, parts to this process could come about in regards to the overall meetings as well as the formal uh, gatherings between Kim and President Trump. Well, as always, appreciate getting to pick your expert brain on what to look for as Kim Jong-un and President Donald Trump are meeting again next week in Vietnam. So, Professor, thank you so much for taking the time to Skype in today. We certainly appreciate it. Happy to do that, and, and I realize I forgot to mention that these views are mine only and do not represent <laughs> the U.S. government or the Navy. Okay, we have the official disclaimer. With that, we'll let Dr. Terry Roaring down at the Naval War College sign out. And with that, that just about wraps up another week here in downtown Providence. We look forward to seeing you next week on Monday when it's Business Monday with CEO Josh Fenton. But of course, read the big news right now on Go Local Prov. Bob Kraft facing prostitution charges. So go to golocalprov.com, check us out over the weekend on Facebook, and we'll see you next week. I'm Go Local News Editor Kate Nagel.